Welcome into New Orleans Saints now. I am Tom Downey here with some rumors and news around the New Orleans Saints. And boy, do we begin with the juicy one. How about a trade for Russell Wilson? Obviously in the offseason, but the report from Jordan, Jordan Schultz, who works from Free ESPN, came out today that the Saints are among the teams that Wilson would be willing to waive his no trade clause for. And the Saints, long term under contract, do not have a franchise QB at the moment. And I believe that the Russell Wilson drama, which was so well documented last offseason, is going to reach critical mass this offseason. Whether that is a trade or a coaching change in Seattle, there's going to be some movement out of Seattle in some capacity. And I would not be stunned if Wilson ends up getting dealt. Now, this new list of three teams he'd waive his no trade clause for, Three that are not an accident. They both need franchise quarterbacks. Denver, or all three, I should say. Denver, the New York Giants, and the New Orleans Saints. Now, the over overlapping team from the original Russell Wilson trade approved list that was leaked, not leaked, outright stated by his agent last offseason were the Dallas Cowboys, Chicago Bears, the Saints again, and the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, the Raiders not on that list anymore. The Cowboys and Bears have their quarterbacks in Dak Prescott and Justin Fields, respectively. Russell Wilson, I think in part because of the injury and the new scheme and just I think things just kind of running their course in Seattle, has not been that great this year. I thought he was a lot better against the Niners. The TD interception ratio looks solid, but because he missed time, because he's been a little bit off, I think it's going to take a miracle for Wilson to lead his team to Seattle. And if Seattle does make or does miss the playoffs, there's going to be some change. Now, a trade for Russell Wilson, because we know what he is at his best, is going to be expensive. You're talking multiple premium picks and or players. But for New Orleans, why not go all in? Like, I know that Taysom Hill's a fun gadget guy. Okay, you can still utilize him in his weird gadget package role. Ann Book's not the guy long-term. Jameis Winston's a free agent. You trade for Russell Wilson, the Saints immediately become contenders once again. And for those of you going, oh, but what about the money? Don't worry about it. No team better than New Orleans has shown they know how and that they are willing to manipulate the cap to get any player that they want. Don't I don't care about what the salary cap number says right now. The Saints will be fine, and they will be able to afford Russell Wilson if they want to go get him. So let's pretend you are Mickey Loomis slash Sean Payton. Would you trade for Russell Wilson? A true yes or no answer here. This is the pinned comment on today's video. Type in Y for yes or N for no. I say yes. It's not hell yes, but I want to hear from you. So if the ad break comes on YouTube, head down to that pinned comment and type your responses. Some good news and much needed good news, I might add, for the New Orleans Saints here. Alvin Kamara finally, knock on wood, is set to be back for the Saints as they take on the New York Jets. Kamara missed another game this past week against the Dallas Cowboys after being limited to practice. But on Wednesday of this week, Kamara was a full participant at practice for the Saints. And despite what his rushing number average might say, I think it is very clear to anyone watching the games that they have really missed Kamara. I know the 3.6 average is poor, but he's been immensely impactful in the passing game as well. And he's like their one clear-cut playmaker, given all their issues at wide receiver. And some more issues at running back we're going to get to here in a little bit involving Mark Ingram. But first, let's enjoy this. Type me if you are glad to have, it appears, I'll, I'll just say appears until it's he plays because I just get so nervous, right? My fans team is as well. Type me if you're glad to have Alvin Kamara back right now in the comments section. While you're down there, by the way, look for this link in the comments or in the description. It's chatsports.com slash Saints Hoodie. A fire sale going on right now on Fanatics with Hoodies up to 75% off. Almost The link will have all of them and they're about 50% off, but some of them craziest kind of this hoodie by the way this pretty solid one $17 what a what an incredible deal 
for a Saints fan, for yourself this holiday season, or for a loved one, it's a great offer that I think will only be available for a limited time. So go take advantage right now. Chatsports.com slash Saints hoodie. That link again, folks, will be in both the comments section and in the description. The news I mentioned, not good here on Mark Ingram. The Saints are going to be without Mark Ingram for at least a little bit here. He has been placed on the COVID-19 list. He has reportedly tested positive. The second Saints player to test positive this week, defensive end, the star, Cam Jordan, also likely going to be out. Now, the way the rules work for vaccine players, which I believe Mark Ingram is, you need two negative tests 24 hours apart. So start, start, if you start testing negative, you know, Saturday morning and then test again su Sunday morning, you could play. In general, what the NFL has seen is that that's too tight of a time frame for a player who tests positive on Wednesday to get cleared in time for Sunday. So I would anticipate, if not outright assume, Ingram will not be able to go for New Orleans. Good news, Alvin Kamara is back. That is a very large deal for the Saints. Dwayne Washington, Tony Jones also on the roster. So the Saints should be okay for a game against a... Look, well, let's be honest here, folks. If the Saints can't beat the Jets, even on the road, <laughs> maybe it's just time to embrace the tank altogether. I want you guys to subscribe right now if you love the Saints. We are past the 2,500 mark. Thank you all so much. But if you want more free Saints videos... Hit that big red button and join us right now. We'll end today's show talking about Taysom Hill. We will spend some time on this one here as Hill is set, or at least expected, I should say, to start once again for the New Orleans Saints. He's been playing through that mallet finger injury. Not fun, not comfortable, but it's able to be played through with maybe surgery coming on in the offseason. The quarterback room for the Saints is not great without Jameis Winston. So we will spend some more time discussing whether or not Hill is the right guy to start in New Orleans. But what do you guys think? Is Hill the right guy to start at QB? Type 1 for yes, at least give him one more chance. Or type 0 for no, you've seen enough. As weird as this might say to say, to say out loud, wait, yeah, I think that's right, Hill might be the best chance at winning for New Orleans. I'm not a big taste or I'm not a big Trevor Simeon guy. I'm sorry. I think he's a replacement level quarterback. He's a top 90 QB, but I don't think he brings you enough in an offense that is going to have issues throwing the ball because they don't have good playmakers. I think the running ability from Taysom Hill cannot be discounted for this particular offense. And as long as the Saints are in the playoff picture, I don't need to see Ian Book because I think he's a backup anyway. Now, if they start losing a bunch of games, okay, make the move over to Book. But the Saints are a game back right now of the wild card race. And their schedule down the stretch, folks, is not that daunting. You should beat the Jets. The, the, the Jets. You own Tampa with Tom Brady, but you're probably going to lose that game. The Dolphins, that's a winnable game. Carolina, Atlanta with two of those three at home. The Saints should win three, if not four, of those games, guys. And if that's the case, they might just make the playoffs after all. Now, I am, and I have made this point very clear consistently. Taysom Hill is not a true quarterback. He's not a good thrower. I'm sorry. He's just not accurate or strong enough of arm. He can't do it. But if you're able to lean heavily on the ground game, do so. Taysom Hill's running ability has immense value. I don't care about the contract right now. That's, that's a non-factor in this case. I'm trying to win games. And with a ground game that could feature Taysom Hill, Alvin Kamara, and once he comes back, Mark Ingram, I would rather feature that trio than trying to feature Alvin Kamara, Trevor Simeon, and Traquan Smith, Marquez Callaway. It's not a good passing attack. So zig while everyone's zagging. Run Taysom Hill a ton against the Jets and let him be the dynamic dual threat he is and help cover up the fact that he's not a very good passer overall. 